Hey guys, today in Art Club with Miss Burford, we'll be creating watercolour and line art landscape pictures. You will need watercolour paints along with a pot of water, watercolour paper, washi tape, a paintbrush, a black pen which is either a biro or waterproof, a pencil, and some sea salt and table salt in different sizes. To start with, you're going to go along each side of your watercolour paper with some washi tape. So you want to line the edge of the washi tape with the edge of the paper so you get a nice straight line. And just allow that tape to go over the edges to stick to the table or you can stick this to a board. You could either do this as part of the lesson or as prep. Um, and take this down ready for the children to work straight onto but you'd either want to take this on the table before the children come in or onto a board at home which is what I have done in the past however I've started doing this as part of the lesson and letting the children do it so they can learn to line up the edges start about halfway down your page by drawing zigzags across the page and this is going to be mountains if you wish to have more mountains in the distance then you can draw more triangles behind these zigzags that we've just done or you can just stick to that one line of zigzags and draw more hills in front, it's completely up to you. Add some wavy lines across the bottom half of your paper, two or three wavy lines should do it. When you're happy with the layout of your mountains and your hills you can then go ahead and add some trees. So stick to adding trees onto your hills in the foreground. The kind of trees that we're going to be drawing for this are um, like birch trees or pine trees. So we're going to draw a straight line down the middle of each tree which is going to be the trunk. And as they get further away, the trunks get shorter. You can then add the details to the tree by adding the branches and the pine needles. So you can see that I'm just drawing a line either side of the tree trunk and I'm curving it at the end of where I finish each line. I repeat this process on every single tree and also as I get towards the bottom of the tree my lines coming out from the trunk get a little bit longer. Feel free to add as many trees as you like on the hills and dot them round where you feel they look right. Next, add some dimension to your mountains by turning them into a pyramid, go from the point of each one and add another triangular piece down. Add this extra line to all of your mountains but keep it on the same side because you want the shadow to be on the same side of each mountain. Extend the line of the next mountain across if you have any random lines that we've just drawn just stopping in midair so that it looks like that shadow is behind a mountain. Have a look at the video to see what I mean. Now you can fill the sky area with nice clean water. Emphasis on the word clean. And it should be clean because you haven't used it yet. But just fill that sky area and go up to the edge of the mountains and be careful with your line work around there. After you've filled the sky area with water, you can add some colour to it. So dip your paintbrush into the water and then dip it into the watercolour colour that you want to use and then add this to the sky so it should be nice and wet. So you want to go for either pinks, purples, uh, blues and greens, or oranges and reds. Go for oranges and reds if you're after a sunset effect. Pinks, purples, um, can either be nighttime or um, sunset. And then you've got the option of blues and greens to create a nighttime light and you can add a bit of black to that as well if you like. If you notice that I've got like an orangey color around my mountains so you want to add a bit of brightness just behind these points so either add a yellow an orange or a green to this area but think about what other colors you are using in the rest of the sky to fill in this area green doesn't really go with any of the other colors other than if you're using blue and black to get your colors to blend and bleed into each other just add a little bit of water to the area where you want to mix them Before you leave the sky to dry, add some salt into the sky so you can sprinkle on sea salt 
and also add table salt. I like using both to get a good texture on there and this creates a speckledy effect in the sky. Whilst the sky is drying, you can either carry on drawing on your picture along the bottom section or you can leave the sky to dry completely and come back to work on this later. You'll need to leave it about an hour to dry. I carried on working on mine because I used mine as an example for my class and I didn't have all that much time. Normally I'd leave it to dry, but you can carry on using your pen as long as you're using a biro or a waterproof pen. Here I'm using a Winsor & Newton um, black fine liner and these are resistant against water. But just go over all of your lines so it really makes them stand out. Hence why I like using the Winsor & Newton black pen, it's a lot darker than a biro it doesn't matter which you use really it will make it stand out either way but add some hatching to where there would be shadows so underneath the trees i added some hatching for my shading so this is just drawing lines on a diagonal the closer you draw them together the darker the shadow is going to be the further apart the lighter the shadow is going to be and also do this on the sections of the mountains where you've got that 3d piece so where you turn them into like pyramid shapes for me that's on the left hand side so instead of coloring in where there be shadows, I'm just going to hatch shade it. I added some extra mountains in this section because I just thought this bit was a little bit bare, so you can do that if you need to. You can also add details like snow capped mountains, so just add a little zigzag line across part of the tops of the mountain and some little dashes to look like snow. Then, if you didn't leave the sky to dry before, leave everything to dry now and come back to this later when it's all dry then you can peel off the tape the most satisfying part of this so you get these nice clean straight lines so pull these all off and it is the big reveal finally brush away the salt pieces from the sky and this will reveal the speckledy special effect in the sky if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more art lessons like this every week and other art related content every now and then. See you next week for more art with Miss Burford.